Hey, Jonathan here. Last year, I released this video on how to load up 1,000 files containing a million records in around three seconds using about a line or two of code in R. Now, since then, I've had a few questions come up on how to adapt this to work with different situations. And I thought it'd be a good chance to also give a few updates on this as well as well as show you a few new cool tips and tricks as well. If you're new to this channel and you're keen to learn the latest tips, tricks, and tools for working more effectively with data, please hit the subscribe button for weekly videos. Uh, first up, I have this question here from David Jackson, who asked, what do I have to change in the code to read text files? So he's got a directory of text files and would he need to change the script to import these files? So first up, let's take a quick look at that. Now, first of all, I wanted to point out that CSVs are actually text files. So I've got a folder here containing CSV files. And you notice here, even though that all of these have the Excel icon and will open up in Excel by default, if you double click on them, they are actually text files. So CSV stands for comma separated value, which is basically a standard which dictates that all of the columns are separated by commas. And you can see here that I've just opened this up in Notepad and you can see it's just a plain text file with commas between them. Now, if I rename this to a .txt file, then it's going to work exactly the same way um, in the uh, in, in the script in R. I don't have to change anything and this is just going to work, right? So there we go, that should be nice and easy. But here's the thing, comma separated values is not the only standard available. Sometimes instead of commas, we have tabs inside of these. So when the file extension is not .csv, if it is a .txt, then potentially uh, some of these delimiters between these columns could be different as well. So what I've done here is I've actually created this, uh, these extra set of files. And as a little bonus later on at the end of this, I'm going to show you how I actually generated all of these using R using a few lines of code as well. So, and what would, could this be useful for if you're say like generating reports or um, all kinds of things, this can be a really cool function. So I'm going to show you that later. So I'm going to open this up again. I can open this with notepad and here you'll see that this is exactly the same file. It's just got tabs as delimiters instead of commas, right? So let's come over to R. I've got uh, my file up here. I'm going to load in library tidyverse. And I just wanted to point out as well that 99% of the stuff I do teach is using tidyverse. So tidyverse here is a library, but it's actually much more than a library. It's a whole collection of libraries. It's a whole standard, a set of standards for using R, which is very, very powerful. Now, here's the thing. A lot of professionals now are using the tidyverse standard because it makes it much easier to interpret, much easier to learn, and just a much more productive experience for analysts to come in and do their work. So a lot of training right now is still using BASAR. And, you know, it's, um, there's definitely, there's, there's some benefit in learning base R and stuff as well. But if you're trying to learn R for the first time, it gets really confusing to learn multiple standards. And it gets really messy to kind of start mixing lots of standards if you don't know exactly why you're using something over the other. Now, all of the functions here I'm going to show you are tidyverse functions. And hopefully this will give you an idea of just some of the really cool things that you can do with it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run a directory and I'm going to look at this folder CSV files to merge. If I hit tab, this automatically lists all the folders for me. So I can hit tab to complete that for me so I don't have to type it. There's one extra parameter I'm going to have in here, which is full names is equal to true. And this will just basically give me the full file path here. So now I have a list of all of my files. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to pipe this. Now, basically what this is, this takes all these results and it's going to run, um, run it through all these results in a function that I specify here. So pipe, the shortcut key for this is control shift M. It basically types these three characters here for me. And I'm going to use the tidyverse function map df. Now you notice that there's a whole bunch of map functions here. And in some of my lectures, I go over like a lot of these in a lot more detail because this is where some of the really, really cool kind of stuff happens. So here I'm giving an example of just reading a whole folder of files, but actually you can use this for a ton of things. Um, and it just makes it so quick and easy to do it. So in here, I'm going to use the function read underscore CSV. Now read underscore CSV again is the tidyverse version of this. Now, when you do get a little bit more advanced, there's other um, functions that you can use to read in the data as well. Most people use read.csv, but generally speaking, I'd say for beginners, I wouldn't recommend that uh, because it has a few strange defaults. Like for instance, um, text columns don't come in as text. Now, if you're familiar with factors and that sort of thing, then maybe that's not an issue. But if you're starting out, I would definitely try and avoid that. Um, the one that I've been teaching lately for slightly more advanced users is to swap this out with a library called fread from the data table library. And this can speed this up a bit as well. But right now I'm going to stick with read CSV for here. I'm going to run this. You can see it's pretty much done this instantaneously. Now this is only 118,000 records as opposed to my million records from before. Um, but you know, still a reasonable size data set. And it's just merged all of it into a single table for me. Okay. Now, the first thing I want to look at is, okay, well, how do we change this to look at these other types of files instead? So probably the easiest way to do this is using RStudio to basically generate some of this code for us. So within RStudio, there's actually a way that we can import a bunch of different files. Now, in this tab down here, this is where my environment uh, history and connections are. I'm just going to expand this up here. And there's a nice little button here, import data set. So here, if I click on this, uh, we've got from text. And by the way, from text also includes CSV files. So we've got base R, which I kind of mentioned before, and we also got the read R library. And the read R library is basically the tidyverse, uh, is one of the libraries that sits within tidyverse. So I'm gonna select this here, and um, I'm going to uh, browse for this file. Okay, I'm just going to select one of these here. And this is gonna load up a preview for me. Now here, by default, what's happened is it's picked up this file and it's assumed that it's using commas as the delimiter. And so what's happened is, is that all of the data has come into a single column. Now, in order to update this and change this, you've got all of these different settings here. So you've got, uh, First row as names, trim spaces, open data viewer. We've got some uh, delimiter. So this is the setting we want to change here. I'm going to change this from comma to, and you can change it to all these different things here. I'm going to change this to tab, right? And as soon as I do this, this separates out all of the columns like it should be, right? Now there's some other settings in here that you can have a little play around with depending on your data. And the nice thing about this is that it's actually generated all of the code for you right here. So here, um, instead of using read CSV, we're using the function read delim, right? Now read delim, it's got the file here and it's got a few settings. So slash T, that's basically for the tabs and it's got these other things, escape double trim and all this kind of stuff, right? So for now, I'm just gonna take all of this. So I'm just going to copy this. I'm gonna cancel this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste this in here instead. So instead of read CSV, all I'm going to do is, um, I need to change the 
folder as well. Let me just change this. So now what we're going to do is we want our text file directory. So text files to merge, tab. Again, I want the full names equals true. And again, I'm going to go map df, right? Uh, and in here, I can basically paste this in. Now, there's a few little things I'm going to adjust here. Uh, so when I paste this in, I'm just going to delete this last bracket over here. And I'm going to delete this bracket over here as well. Because you notice here, when I added read CSV to this function, um, I didn't need to add any brackets. I didn't need to add any parameters. Why is that? Um, basically, what happens is that all these files here get passed in as the first parameter here. Oops, let me not move that. So this If I delete this, let me just drop this down to the next line, which is also fine. If I just delete this, okay, that's effectively going to pass in all of the files. Now, all of these other settings here are all of the settings which are also going to get passed into read the limb. But the first parameter is basically supplied by this here. So that's basically what I need to do. I run this again. It's just done the same thing. And this is all based off our tab separated files instead. Now, I wanted to give you a few little bonus things here as well. So the map function is extremely powerful. In fact, I used it to generate all of these files in the first place. So here I have all these text files. Let me just go off and delete those. And I'm going to show you how I actually created those in the first place. So here's the other thing which is really cool about tidyverse. Normally, we think of tables as just kind of rows and columns containing simple values. But what if we could create a table which contained other tables, right? So we've loaded how many files were here? Um, was it seven or something like that? Um, Effectively, what we could do is we could contain each of these files inside a cell, right? And the benefit of that is that you can start to do some really cool things with it. So one of the questions I had as well was, well, what happens when, say, you have a different number of columns in each of these, right? So that's something that kind of which is pretty common actually so you send out these files for some data collection or the files have just been collected at different periods of time new data has come on board how do you how do you deal with that right now it just so happens that um, these files do actually have a different number of columns and they've all just been added together and you can't obvious you can't immediately see that here but let me show you a way that you can actually see that really easily so now instead of like loading all of these files into a single table what i'm going to do instead is i'm going to load each of these into their own separate tables and i'm going to embed all of those in a kind of single table so that we can treat each of these tables individually. So let me show you what that actually looks like. So here, I'm just going to add this little bit of code here. And I'm going to run this. And let me show you this table here. So here, what we have is a uh, two column table. And inside one of the columns here, inside this data column, we actually have all of the other tables, right? So here we have, we can see that this first file contains 17,000 records that had 13 columns. Here we have 17,184 columns and 13 columns. When we get down to the bottom here, we can see that we have 16,000 records and 14 columns. So very quickly, we can get a glance of this and see that how the files are different, how, like how big each of the files are, do they have different columns, and you can really get a lot more fancy with this as well. For instance, I could do summary statistics on each of these tables individually for each of these tables, right? I could do um, 
say, run uh, a linear regression on each of these tables individually, right? And then kind of merge everything back together, spit these back out. Now for this example here, all I'm really gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna spit these back out to our text file, right? So I've got this over here. And what I'm gonna do, actually one more thing, let me just, um, show you what this looks like as well. So if you actually wanted to see the data within each of these tables, now sometimes, like after you start using R for a while, you get used to looking stuff in the console and it's nice because it's just so quick to get all the results there. Now, um, if you want to come back and view this in more of like an Excel kind of format, what you can do is you can basically click this view button over here and what it's going to do is show a more traditional looking table. So here we have our table here and each of these here um, has basically the sub table. So if I click into this here, I can actually see the table, right? So here's all the data for that specific file, right? So I close this down and I can basically click into any one of these to view those details. So, you know, really pretty cool. And again, this particular structure really only works like this with tibbles, which is basically a tidyverse data frame, right? So another, another really nice reason to use tidyverse for this. Now, what I basically want to do here is I wanna take each of these and I wanna spit these out as a tab separated file instead. So I'm gonna use this little chunk of code here, right? So this is basically using, again, one of the map functions with this function, write CSV, uh, write TSV actually, sorry. And this function here takes a parameter X and a parameter path. Now by setting this up in the file and saying what these are, then that basically feeds this into this. And this actually works really nicely. So I've got this over here. I've got my empty folder over here. And uh, let me just actually the folder, that folder is also here. So maybe that's easier to see it. Let's run that line of code there, right? And you can see it's just generated all those files for you, right? So really pretty cool. And there's all our files back here again. Cool, so if you found these tips helpful, please give a thumbs up. And if you wanna learn more about these kind of things, so I've gone over all of these really, really quickly. Hopefully this has given you a really nice idea of just how powerful R is for doing all these kind of things. But you know, it can take a little while to get the intuition to some of these functions to kind of make them do everything that you want them to do. So I'm gonna have a course that goes over what is the difference between base R versus tidyverse versus data tables and different formats like that. And when do you want to use each one? How do you use them? How do you incorporate them? What's the difference? What are the traps, right? Again, like I mentioned, 99% of the courses I teach is uh, tidyverse. R Markdown and Shiny. Now, these three things right here are some of the things that make R such a nice language to work with in 2019, right? With Shiny and um, R Markdown, you can basically generate reports in minutes. You can develop websites and web pages interactively without having to le learn something like Node.js or Angular or something like that, right? So it massively, massively simplifies the time it takes to generate results and get that, get them out and publish them to models that you can publish to the web, publish to say, automatically generate PowerPoint slides, all these kind of things. And again, all of the functions that you see right here, I'm gonna be talking about all of these in a lot more detail so that instead of just having to copy and paste these, you get the intuition to be able to use these in a really, really powerful way. So if you wanna find out more about that, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.